All right, so we're gonna keep going with these mountain uh, mats that we've been making. So last week, we talked about how we turned this 3D actual mountain into a map that shows elevation. So remember if we painted the picture or we painted the mountain every 500 feet, we'd end up with lines that look like that. And then when we look over this mountain with a, like in a helicopter or with a drone, you would end up seeing these circles going around that island, showing the map, uh, making a map. You guys remember what these maps are called? Maps that show elevation? Good. One word that you could use to tell, uh, describe these maps are contour maps. By the way, you guys need to know that off the top of your head. So if you didn't know that, that's something you do need to kind of commit to memory, that a map that shows elevation is a contour map. There's another name we could use for them. Does anybody remember? Yeah, Alex? Topographic. Yeah, topographic maps. So either way, they're the same. Um, last week, we started talking about um, if we look at these maps, can we tell any information from them? So first of all, let me show you, there's a river right here. Don't say anything out loud. I want everybody to get a chance to think. If north, south, east, and west are the way we expect them, so never eat soggy worms. Okay, whatever, you guys are wrong, it's fine. Um, now you got me off top. If that's the way it goes, never eat soggy worms. Which way is this river? So again, this river up in that one right there. What way is that river flowing? Don't say anything out loud. Everybody take a look at that river and see if you can tell me which direction it's flowing. And then my follow-up question is going to be, how'd you know? If you don't remember this, what should you be doing right now? Probably looking back in your packet. Probably looking back in your packet. So if you can't answer this confidently, look back in your packet. I'll tell you it's on page 29. You only have to flip, flip back one page to see the direction of a stream flow. Down is not, thank you. That's not the answer I'm looking for. When I say direction, I mean north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. So I didn't see a lot of people look back. That means I can call on literally any of you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call on you, Sam. Uh, northwest. northwest, you are correct. Follow up question for somebody else How did Sam know it was going northwest? Who wants to volunteer? Alex. Because so we can actually look at the numbers. The numbers are going high to low. Now, even though they're not labeled up here, they were labeled down here. So this was a zero and this one was 2000. So they are going from high to low. So they're going this way, which is northeast on the map. Now there's one other way we can tell by looking at the map that this river is going northwest. Uh, if you don't know this other way, flip back in your notes and see what we wrote on page 29. What is the other reason we know this map uh, river is going northwest? Oh. Alex, you know it? Bending is the word I use. Yeah. Oh, they curve, they bend, yep, either way. Mm -hmm. So this is what he's talking about. So notice, so there's a bend or a curve, a bend or a curve. So you, you said it one way and we can think of it that way or the other way. So they see how they're pointing? See how these kind of make arrows pointing this way? So like Alex said, they point in the opposite direction they go, or I could say they point to where it came from. Or the other way of looking at it is see how the water is coming out of the V that that river or that those contour lines are making. You need to know both of those things you guys just told me. 
You need to know which way it goes and how you know it goes that way by just looking at the map. All right, next, let's look at this peak right here. So right in this area. So just that part of the map. So just of that section, so you're ignoring the rest of this. Which side of this peak is steeper? Again, don't say anything out loud. If you don't know how to tell, what should you be doing? Looking back. Guys, that's called study. If you can't answer my question right off the top of your head, flip back to page 29 where we took notes on the steep side of a hill and uh, figure it out. I didn't see many people look back. Does that mean I can call on any of you? All right, Ella, no. I couldn't hear you. I the farther side? The north, north, south, north, east, west. North. North, the side, yeah. yeah. The north or even better, probably within the northeast. Olivia, do you know how she knew that? On the line. Exactly, that's it. So you do need to be able to tell me which side. And again, when they ask what side, again, they're looking for north, south, east, west, northeast, any of that information. So I would have gone with north or northeast would have been accepted. Maybe even east, depending on where we were looking, but definitely not over and down here. And again, we knew that because the lines were close together. Perfect. So that's kind of some of the really important stuff that we need to be able to read off the map. And then we need to be able to say, all right, if we're going on a hike from point, let's say point A all the way down here to point B, this seems like a pretty big hike, um, but maybe that's what they want to call it. You're going from A to B, walking this trail right here. We kind of want to know what's going to happen on this trip. Let me pick a more simple map to look at. This one's a little complicated. Let's go to, I'm gonna go, to this map. If this map is the one I was looking at and I was going from a hike from A to B, which are conveniently labeled, we kind of want to know what this trip is going to look like. Would you be able to look at this map and describe to the person about to do the hike what they're in for? Yeah. yeah. What would you tell them a little bit about, Drake? Beginning, it's like low elevation, and then as we go higher up, it gets higher. Okay, so as we walk, we're going to start low and we're going to go higher. Yep, then what? Elevation and then we do the last of the mountain. Mm, you're, you're you're confusing some words. I know what you're talking about. We got to fix your words. Yeah. Okay. So Drake was correct. We're gonna go. We're elevation is going to increase. But what, what else should we tell them about this walk? Yeah, Chris. You should go for the outside. No, they're going from A to B. So either way, that's their way. What? So that's their trip. A to B. What can you tell them about their way? I know what you're talking about. What you're getting at. So tell me about this trip. If they're going from A to B. What can they expect on this hike? They're going to go 100 meters high. Alex, want to add to it? At the end of it, it's going to be a very steep walk. We could even talk about at the beginning. At the beginning, it's going to be what kind of walk? Oh, thank you. The opposite of steep, by the way, it would be like a gentle slope. So here they are going to increase, like Drake said. But it's going to be a much gentler walk. How do you know that, by the way? Yeah, so we knew it was gentle because the lines are far apart on the left side. So they're going to be walking up, but a gentle slope. They're going to get to the top of the hill. And then when we go down the other side, it's going to be a steeper slope. How would you draw this if you wanted to draw them a map of what this was going to look like? Can you show me again? Yeah. So he was going up, up, kind of gentle, but then a steep slope down. You guys have to be able to do this. 
you have to be able to draw what this walk or hike is going to look like by just looking at, well, we have to be a little more accurate. So not by just roughing it like I did. This gives you a general idea and it is important that you can look at it and say, okay, gentle and then steep. But we need to be able to draw these, which by the way are called profiles. Why am I calling this a profile of a mountain? What's a profile like if you were in Mrs. Lachimich's art class and she asked you to draw your profile or somebody else's profile? What would you be drawing? The side. the side view. So if I was to draw the side view of my face, I'd have my forehead, oh, some eyelashes. Oh, I gotta, my eyes kind of sink in a little. Nose, lips. There we go. There's my side view. Oh, good. This isn't what I look like? Is it worse? No. Don't answer that. Unless your answer is no. <laughs> it's worse. The drawing is worse or I'm worse? Be careful with your answer. Oh. <laughs> you're missing hair. Oh, I forgot the hair. All right. I got some sticking up hair going on too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So the side view of my face, you get do you get the whole gist of my face by looking at that? No, you just get the outline of my face. We're going to be doing the same thing with the mountains here. We're going to be drawing the side view of the mountain. And you guys already kind of knew how to do that, but we have to be very accurate in doing it. And that's why I asked you to grab one of these strips of paper. Did anybody need delivery because they didn't read the board? I also highly recommend pencil for this activity. Um, you don't have to have pencil for what we're about to write, but when we actually start to do these, I'm going to have you get a pencil out. So you guys have this, which you may have noticed is the same map. And then right here, we're going to, um, we're going to write the steps. So like I said, you have to be very accurate when you're doing this. Um, and it's going to be important that you follow the steps to make it to make your lives as easy as possible when doing this. So there's five steps for drawing these. I'm sorry, there's six. So we're going to be putting those steps right here in the bottom. Are you ready for step number one? Oh, by the way, what we're going to do is we're going to write the directions. And then if you flip over the page to page 31, you'll notice the exact same setup. Then we're going to go ahead and do it on page 31. So we're going to do the directions on page 30, then practice it on 31. Okay, step one, whoops, step one, determine the contour interval and write it in for each line. So step one's fairly simple. By the way, guys, I'd like you to write these word for word. So that way, if you forget how to do them, it's almost like you have a perfect textbook explanation on page 30 here. So I have a very simple one up here as an example. So we're not doing the one in our packet yet. So how about the one up on the board? Do I have, I don't have them all labeled. How do you go about filling them in? This one's pretty simple, but how would you figure out the contour interval? I got 20 and I got 60. Yeah, you got to figure out like, okay, try something. I've always said you couldn't do math and this one's pretty easy to figure out. You can do math, but I just like to try something. You could try 10s, 20, 30, 40, that won't work. 20, 40, 60. So this one's going up by 20s. Now here's where the one thing I am missing was um, the points to be profiled. So they would have been labeled, there would have been an A here and I think B is here. That would always be labeled for you. So we've got that. Then step two will be, and again, I'd like you to write this one out, place a scrap paper along the line to be profiled and mark each place a contour line touches the paper and label it. 
So again, I would like you to write that word for word. And if it's confusing, it won't be as soon as I show you. So go ahead and write it down. So I do think this set of directions sounds really weird until you see it a couple of times. It's not as bad as it sounds though, I promise. So it says, place a scrap paper along the line to be profiled and mark each place the contour line touches the paper and label it. So we've got our map. We've got where they want us to go from. So we're going from A to B over here. We've got a piece of scrap paper. So the directions say, place the scrap paper along the line to be profiled. So you're gonna put it all the way to A to B. I know mine's off a little bit, but go from A to B. And then we're gonna mark every time that scrap paper touches a contour line. So see how the lines that I did on my scrap paper? match up with the where the contour lines are touching it or they should at least and then i labeled them so that's step two again i see a few of you trying it right now hold off just a second till we get them all done so that's step two step three we're going to place our scrap paper on the x-axis so these are going to come out looking a little bit like a graph but i will tell you they're not graphs they're drawings so even though it looks like a graph, it won't follow any of the rules of graphing. That's step three. So if you haven't written that down, right? Step three, place your scrap paper along the X axis. So again, you're gonna take your scrap paper that you already drew on and labeled. Step four is another one of those that are a little weird until you try it out. Everybody got step three? Place your scrap paper on the X axis. Step four goes right after that. So again, write this one out. It says for each line on the scrap paper, make a dot on the graph directly above it at the number of the contour interval. That's another weird one. Write it out and I'll explain it. Whoa, 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 sorry. So here's what that means. So you already had your scrap paper down at the bottom look of this picture here. So this is for each line on the scrap paper. So all these ones we marked and labeled we're gonna make a dot on the graph directly above the number, directly above it at the number of the contour interval. What that means is this line was for 20. So I'm gonna put a dot directly above our mark at 20. Without moving the scrap paper, here's a mark for 40. We're gonna put a dot right above it at the 40. 
Same with the 60. Oops, sorry, 60 is up here. Got another 60 and then a 40. So the marks go directly. So you don't move your scrap paper at all. And you just basically, like, this is why it's kind of like graphing. Notice how it's not following any of the rules of graphs, though. So they, the numbers don't go in any particular order. They're not spaced properly. It's because this is not a graph. This is a drawing. So it only kind of looks like a graph. Speaking of looking like a graph, the next step is connect the dots. So step five, that's it, connect the dots. So step five, connect the dots. Except we can't just connect the dots perfectly. Let me go back to the map. What's going on inside this circle with the numbers? So we've got 60 on that side and 60 on that side. What's going on there? That's a peak. Yeah, the peak of a mountain or a hill, whatever the heck this is. He's right, this is a peak. What do we know about peaks of mountains? Strong. Were they not, not wrong? Yes, they just go there. Point. What about the shape of a peak? What? Point. They're typically pointed. They're not typically flat across. In fact, do we know what number is not in the middle of the circle? There's definitely no 80s. How do you know there's no 80s? There'd be a, there'd be a line for 80s. What else is not inside the circle? No 80s or above? How about this? Is it equal to 60 in here? What would, what would have to be, what would we have had to do if there was any 60s on the inside? We would have had to mark them. We would have had to draw them. So are there any 60s inside this circle? Are there any 80s inside this circle? But what could be in that circle? Could be a 79. Could be a 69. Could be a 65. Could be 61. Could be anything above 60, but below 80 inside this. So what am I getting at? Instead of just connecting those dots, and make, would we make this a flat line here? Mm -mm. When you get to the top, Hills are not flat. Here's step six. Hills are not flat. The line at the top of the hill must be a little above the highest dots on the graph. That's step six. So they have to be above the 60s, but not touching 80s. If you follow those six steps, you will be able to draw these no problem. So what we're gonna do now, again, page 31 is the exact same map we were looking at. We're gonna walk through the steps and actually draw ourselves a profile. So everybody turn on over to page 31 and you'll see this. The first thing I do have to tell you is I made a mistake and I did not make these lines long enough. So could you please just extend these lines? This is normally not part of the activity. On the regions, these will be perfectly sized for you. So again, just extend those lines. They don't have to be perfect. This is not part of a normal activity. Everybody got them over? All right, look back. What was step one? Determine the contour interval and Write it in for each line. Here's also, I'm gonna give you a hint because I this is not my first day. So you know how the next step is to go along the line they're telling you to profile? Where should we label these since I'm now covering up a good portion of the map? Above it. So even though this 100 was labeled down here, I 
highly recommend labeling it up here. And same with this zero over here was labeled below the line. I'm going to relabel it so I can actually see. So I have a zero and a 100 labeled. What are the lines going up by then? 20s. How'd you figure it out? You did math? Ugh, I hate math. I just guessed. I tried 10s. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It wasn't enough, so I needed a bigger number. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. But those are all the lines. And you guys know that this 100 and the 80 and the 60 and the 40 all repeat themselves. Here's another hint because it's not my first day. Label all of the lines now. Even if you've already labeled them over here, I want them repeated over here. So there's 100. We're going to label this one 100 again. This one is 80 again. 60. 40, 20, zero. Now it's hard to see those. In fact, I bet you guys can't even read mine on the board. And that's okay. You are the only ones who need to know what these numbers say. So I can read that that's a 20. You don't have to read mine that it's a 20. But yeah, label them all. So that was step one. Step one just took way forever. Step one, step two says to place your scrap paper along the line to be profiled and mark and label each time a contour line touches it. So here's what that means. Word of warning, don't move your scrap paper. So you have to mark, okay, there's my scrap paper, there's the contour line. Make a little, a decent sized mark. There's no awards for be, writing as tiny as possible, by the way, so a zero, Mark it, label it zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Don't stop there just because you're at the top of the hill. It says to go from A to B. So we got to go all the way across. Now here's where it's going to get a little hairy. These lines are really close together. Does that mean you shouldn't label them because it's going to be hard to label them? No. Label them anyway. I want every mark on your scrap paper labeled. Again, you're the only one who has to read them. So make sure you've labeled them. So again, there's my scrap paper with a bunch of little marks that are all labeled. That was step two. Step three says, to bring that down, place your scrap paper along again the X axis. So you're just gonna put your scrap paper down here and it's going to become like your X axis of a graph. Again, once it's placed, don't move it. Step four was that weird one that said to place a mark on your graph directly above your scrap paper lines. So what that meant, here's the zero mark. I'm gonna put a dot on zero lining up with my scrap paper. Make these decent so you can see them. Again, do not touch your scrap paper, don't move it. So here's your 20. You need to bring a dot directly above it. Notice how I drew that faint line behind underneath it. That's okay. You don't even have to erase it if you don't want to. But I am gonna warn you, it has to be directly above your mark. So you can't kind of just eyeball this. Like if I eyeballed my 60 and I ended up over here, that's not right. I have to go directly above it. So I do lightly drag my pen or pencil, ensuring I have a fairly straight line. I'm gonna do that for all of them. You should have something that looks like that. If you don't have the drag marks, that's okay. Then remember step five and six, they kind of are buddies. Connect the dots, 
But remember when you're connecting them, if you get to the top of a hill, like here we have the two 100s, that's the top of the hill up here. You have to curve the hill up, has to go above the 100 line, but not touching the 120 line. Yours should look something like that. And does that look kind of like the one Sam sketched out for us at the beginning of class? It's got the same general idea. The one we did earlier wasn't drawn to scale, but this one matches up perfectly with our map. So it looks like most of you got the general gist of this. We're gonna go ahead and start our homework, which I forgot to write on the board. Homework for tonight. Our, so homework is page, what's the next page, 32? Okay, so we're only gonna do page 33, 32, left side only. So there should be four maps on page 32. We're gonna do the two on the left, meaning A and B and E and F. So these get a little small. So your labeling is gonna get a little messy, but it, you still have to do all the six steps when doing them, even if they're little. Couple words of warning, make sure that you're going from A to B, not B to A. Same down here, make sure you're going E to F, not F to E. So again, we're just doing these two on page 32. Can I also mention guys, there's nothing fancy about my scrap paper that I've been handing, that I handed out to you. I only did this because I was sick of people using whole sheets of paper and saying they didn't needed scrap paper. The edge of anything will work for this. Plus, just because we used this edge, there's still this edge. Turn it over and this edge and this edge. You're welcome to fold it in half. These pieces of paper were only to make your life easier. If you've got one of the pieces of scrap paper that has a bunch of lines on it already, I see that that might be a little annoying. You can grab yourself a different one if you want. All right, so ask us some questions. You've got about five or six minutes to get started on this and ask for help. 